So the fourth track on my EP is called The Vault, and it's actually kind of an interesting song because it, it initially started out as a, a dumb joke song between me and my friend Trevor, and it was supposed to be like just really simple and predictable. And the only gimmick to it was that it featured me and him playing uh, Smash Brothers, and we were just recording us playing the the game and it was mostly picking up our game king controllers and like our voices we talked throughout hoping to get like some funny samples to mess around with i knew from the start i wanted the voices to kind of be in sync with the drums and so i in order to figure out what was the right speed for the voices i was able to look at the audio and detect the the tempo in order to match the song to that tempo that it told me and so i was able to properly sync it and listening throughout the whole sample, there's like a, it's kind of funny because there's one distinct uh, phrase that he said in the middle of the game when I uh, killed him. I found that really funny because it was so abrupt and the words really contrasted each other because fly is... Uh, something rather free, but then very abruptly, much kind of like real life is just like he died. And it's not really meant to be that serious when you listen to the song, but it's kind of a funny contrast between two different feelings. One reason I liked the idea of using voices over the song was I heard this one song called Joe Cool from Port Blue. It featured this one speaker. I'm assuming it was a speech and he cut up his voice to to be rhythmically played throughout the whole song of his, and it was very uh, drum and bass. And I found it really funny, but also very cool and interesting, and I always wanted to try to do something on my own time. And so this song, even though it was still a joke at the time, it was finally an opportunity for me to try what I've always wanted to emulate from it. Though the more that I began to work on the song, I was getting really obsessed with it, and... I was starting to care a lot about it for some reason, even though it was supposed to be a dumb joke, but I, I guess most things that I have any passion for, I put a lot of effort into. But the more I started working on it and switching up the sounds and just trying to f find something that sounds good, I started to notice a lot of things that I liked about the song. And even though it started off really generic and uh, cheesy, like the more I switched things up to match what I heard in my head, the more I realized that this could not be potential for a song on my EP. And, and that's kind of where it stopped being a joke for me. And, and that's where I started to uh, put a lot of detail into things. Uh, the main melody was usually at first just going along with the chord progression exactly from note to note. But um, the, in order to make it more memorable, I decided to to switch up the notes up and down occasionally and trying to figure out a way I could make it fit into the progression while also being uh, catchy and memorable. And so I, yeah, I mainly just branched it out so, uh, so it could stand out more. And so it wouldn't just feel like another part of the chord progression because I wanted to make sure that there's some kind of uh, key idea throughout the chord progression because the chord progression was very simple in the first place. In the intro part of the song where all the, the sounds are fairly uh, low-leveled and not many high-frequency stuff going on, I kept the, the first bubbly synth alone without the piano to make it seem like there's something more, more to lean up into as you go through the song. But after I raised all the exciting parts of the sounds, when the melody came back, I wanted to layer a piano sound so it would sound fuller and kind of contrast different sounds uh, like a natural sound of a piano with uh, something fake and synthetic like the synth I introduced earlier and I was hoping to make this the the melody sound stronger and maybe more uh, substantive in general so that would stand out more. The main chords in the back are very uh, string-based. Um, there's also the, the main bass part that um, goes throughout the song, but that's mostly just for the, the feeling of the, the, of the, 
the sound, rather for the, the timber of the sound in the first place. Um, but I, uh, the very first thing, uh, I used this synthetic string sound that had a lot of warmth and nice ambience to it. Uh, but I found the more I listened to the part, the more I wanted a more realistic timber to it. But I still like the, the synthetic string a lot. I really like the sound, but I feel like I felt like I could enhance it a lot by adding samples of real strings and cutting off the, the frequencies that you more feel rather than hear. Um, to the, the aid the, the synthetic strings um, upper levels to make it feel more airy and alive. And I really like the sound overall, and I found it very dreamy and atmospheric, as I thought of it as an interesting combination between reality and fantasy. In the middle of the song, I wanted to take a break from all the bass and drums. It's not an uncommon thing to do, to kind of give people room to breathe after they get the main idea of it. But at first, without the piano, it was really empty and I felt like you were just waiting for the chorus to come back. And I wanted to make sure that I kept something there that was interesting to keep your attention so you weren't just tapping your finger waiting for the song to pick up again. And that's where I came up with that piano melody. I tweaked it up here and there, and every time I went and listened to the demo in my car, I'd, I'd, always, th I'd always switch it up thinking like, oh, it should have been this note, or I, I should have left that certain bass note, or leave out that G, because it doesn't fit in with the rhythm, or something like that. I like to make sure that it f uh, flowed well and didn't surprise you out of nowhere with something that didn't let you become immersed in the song. After the bridge, after the, the more calming piano part put into the bridge, um, I wanted to bring up the chorus again to kind of kick off the song to make sure that there's a more resolution. But I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't, uh, kind of a, just a copy and paste of what I, what people heard before. I added this other synth that, um, you couldn't necessarily hear at the top end very much, but you could definitely feel it in, I was hoping to add more optimism into the song by having this uh, very quick, um, bouncy feeling going throughout it. In continuing the more optimistic sound of the song, in contrast to what you uh, people would hear before, um, I decided to switch uh, not the notes so much of the chord progression, but I just wanted to change the octaves in which they were. And so like the, the lower end of the chord would go back to the top, so it'd be uh, higher, but not changing the, the melody overall. And I did that with uh, most of the melody also. I wanted to maintain the, the core of the melody, but I wanted to add a new twist on it so it uh, felt different, but in a rewarding way. And so towards the end, you know, you can hear the side chaining of the bass kind of like push, making the, the sounds a little quieter as the, the kick comes out. So it has that wavy, that wavy sound like you hear in a lot of uh, trancey music. But I wanted the, the pumping feeling of the, the background, the chord progressions to be stronger and stronger as it was wrapping up, uh, almost as if uh, like the chords were going out of control. And so what I did, I just uh, I used some automation to change the level. It decreases the sound each time that the kick comes in um, to make it more chaotic and not in a disastrous way, but more just like uh, something coming unstable. And then all of a sudden they're gone with the, the swoop of the frequencies in every direction. And then you're left with just the main melody and the drums. Um, I still kept the bubbly, the more uh, bouncy part of the, the synth to keep the, the feel of the song the same, but to feel more uh, bare and 
give more room to the main melodies so people could uh, focus on it more. The audio sample that I was mentioning before is like, I can fly, I'm dead uh, sound. I I wanted to keep it in the song because I thought it would be really funny. But the more that I kept it, the longer that I kept that sound in, the more insincere the song felt. And I actually, maybe it was just because I was listening to it over and over, but I felt that it detracted from the song's vibe that I wanted to capture. And so I decided to scrap that part of the the sound in order to make it feel more relaxed and atmospheric. But I wanted to keep some essence of the recording of me and my friend playing the game. So uh, I was listening through it, just trying to find something that was that didn't capture your attention as much. And so I found this one little segment of the remotes clicking and... I could hear like a nice little cool rhythm to it. And I still wanted the the sounds to mat- to be somewhat in sync with the drums or be very rhythmic at the very best. Something if you maybe pay enough close enough attention in the chorus, you can hear the the clicking sound kind of panning from left to right throughout the whole thing to to keep it from going stale. And just something to kind of look deeper into if people ever listen back to it. Um, I always enjoy going back to songs and trying to isolate things that I haven't paid attention to before. And so I wanted to add that own little depth for it. And overall, I find it really ironic that the song started from a lack of inspiration and, well, artistic inspiration. And I find it funny because in the end, it turned into one of my favorite songs on the EP because it turned into something I really care about. 